Hey guys, so should you upgrade from the original iPhone SE to the SE 2020? Let's go and find out. Now the original SE is four years old at this point and it has some extremely outdated specs, including 16 gigabytes of storage. But to Apple's credit, it's still on the latest version of iOS. Wow, okay, so surprising first result. We have a van chair for the original. And now the SE 2020 is up. All right guys, now for the specs. The 2020 is a larger screen. Now on the front, the 2020 is an updated camera. We've come a long way from 1MP. And on the back, the cameras are 12MP. But the lens is updated for the two. The new version has more storage. No idea how we survived on 16. The 2020 is a larger battery. And it also has an updated chipset by four generations. The 2020 is water resistant. At the bottom, both ones have lightning ports, but the SE has a headphone jack. The 2 is wireless charging. And on the back, we have metal versus glass. All right guys, let's get to it. All right, guys, get into it. Reddit. Now the original SE has such a small amount of storage that I can't load up a lot of the games for it, uh, games and apps. So it's gonna skip eBay and go to Spotify. SE2. By a few seconds, you do. Later on, you guys should see a bigger difference for stuff like multitasking, SC2, and Scram. Sway so advantage for the two. Amazon shopping. SC2020. Photos. All right, so overall, a slight advantage for 2020. But now for gaming, so there should be a bigger difference for gaming. First we have PUBG. And I'll even show you guys some of the gaming in a few. Time for run. Yeah, so this for example guys, like Temper on this is a pretty simplistic game. But the original SE does stutter when playing it. Alright, yeah, so we have like a four or five second difference. Now when we actually play it. Okay, so we did not see it there, but sometimes it does stutter. Yeah, I'll show you some more gaming in a few. Plants for Zombies. Try it again, Plants for Zombies. Yeah, and I saw the bands there for the two. All right, so now for Geekbench. And this one actually loads up first for the original, but it'll run us in a few. All right, so now for Safari. And as always, gonna quit the web history. All right, so first we have Apple. Surprising first result here, we have DSC, Yahoo,
SC2. Nintendo. SC2. And this one is a pretty pretty easy win for the SC2. Sony. SC2. Yeah, so the more um you know in-depth the web pages, the better results for the SC2. And we'll do one final one. I want to keep all the fanboys happy, so we'll do Microsoft. Yep, so once again, the SE2. So the SE2 won for all of them but Apple. Running out, Patrick, no copyright. Now for the speakers. All right, so we have one speaker versus two. So first you have the SC. SC2. Back to SE. And my son here. Actually, it's a couple seconds. Yeah, so pretty clear of the answer for the two. All right, so I wanted to show you guys some gameplay for Fortnite. Uh, right now I'm recording this on the original iPhone SE. Now, as I said, this only has 16 gigabytes of storage. So I deleted everything that I can from this, either deleted or offloaded. So just for example, like for contacts, you can't delete that, but you can offload it, which I did. Now. The app with the most amount of storage is Fortnite, but that's without the update applied. And of course you need to have that applied to actually uh, actually play it. Um, but aside from that guys, again, everything is deleted. Now at the top here, it says there's only uh, five gigabytes of storage. Now, when I go into Fortnite and I press install, at the top there, the message says that you need almost six gigabytes of storage to download it. So basically guys, if you have the original SC, if you delete every single photo, if you delete all the apps, if you offload the apps that you can't delete, if you do all that stuff, then you still can't play it, uh, at least on a 16 gigabyte version. So yeah, a bit unfortunate, I wanted to show you guys, but if you have anywhere from like 16 to even 64 gigabytes, um, I feel these new phones are much, much better where you're obviously not always offloading stuff. Oh, and the SE2020 runs this game decently. Um, I did some gameplay in my unboxing, but obviously not as good as some of the other high-end phones. Now for the fingerprints. So for the original SE, it's an actual button. 
Well, for the two, it's not really a button. It's really just using force feedback. And yeah, no surprise, the two is a bit quicker. Time now for battery. So we'll just do Temple Run. All right, so check back in a few. Okay, so four hours in. Let's go and check in. Yeah, so the SE only on 1%. And just as I say that, it powers off. Now keep in mind, I've had the original SE for four years, so the battery is gonna be depleted some. The SE 2020 battery is probably a bit better, but overall it's still a pretty bad battery, uh, especially compared to phones like the iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, so not for RAM. And I'm just gonna open up a few more apps. All right, so just added three apps to them. Now keep in mind, the SE1 has only two gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, restart here for the one. Spotify. Great job for the two. YouTube. And let's not go as far back. So let's do... Let's do Temper on. Yeah, so that holds for them. PUBG. Excellent. Instagram again, restart for the one. Yeah, so once you go further back, uh, everything restarts for the original. But I mean, honestly guys, it's, not, it's definitely not bad performance. Uh, considering that it's four years old. Wow, and plants holds. All right, guys, so I actually think a pretty solid job here for the original. Um, Apple does a really good job with optimization. All right, so now for Geekbench. Keep in mind, there's a lot of big apps we did not open up, uh, such as Fortnite. But that said, guys, I mean, this is still really good performance for the original. And of course the SE2. Yeah, so as expected, a nice adventure for the 2020. Now for camera speed. So pretty similar. Now for the front cameras. And with the lights turned off. And also the stabilization. And now for the rear cameras. And once again with the light turned off. All right, and now for the zoom. There's a look at the zoom. So pretty big difference for it. All right guys, so this is my thoughts. Now, again, it's really impressive that the original SE is still on iOS 13. Um, it's actually even rumored to get iOS 14. 
So that's extremely impressive. But obviously a lot of the other stuff here is getting pretty outdated. And you know, if you've been using this every day for a few years, then your battery is probably extremely depleted and you probably have some other issues as well. Now, a lot of people are unhappy that this phone is larger than this one, because obviously a big reason for the appeal of the SE is the extremely small size. Uh, whereas this is the size of the seven and the eight. But the thing about it guys, is that chips like the A13 will not fit in a phone this size. So I think in the future, we're not gonna be getting Apple phones this small again. So yeah, I would recommend upgrading. But hey guys, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more. And be sure to check out my comparison between the SE and the 11.